Science Epic Thoughts on the Cosmos, Episode 9. Not like 9 as in, my name is 9, like a Germanized Megan Trainer from an alternate dimension where the Nazis won the war, but Episode 9 as in, let's get this rock and roll train rolling again. You know, there's something about sunsets that really demonstrates some of the most beautiful aspects of living on planet Earth. I mean, the iconic red tint of the sky and the falling of the sun towards the horizon as time inches by. The cosmos that comes alive when day changes into night gives us a beginning glimpse at a universe that lies beyond. Sunsets even exist on a nearly spiritual level to human beings. Some people worship at the dawn and dusk, but they tend to forget what Newton's first law was. I guess someone was sleeping in class because they missed me, I'd be rapping class. Sheesh! Yeah, easy. <laughs> yeah, science rap, yo. Keeping it funky fresh for all the young kids out there. After the sun sets, the curtain is lifted and the stars themselves are beckoned to the stage. But for those who have ever been in attendance to a sunset, and that probably includes every human being that ever lived, watching the sun dip below the skyline like that gets you thinking about the underlying mechanics of just how our solar system works. But it's kind of funny that we call it sunrise and sunset though. I mean, the sun isn't really rising or setting, we just call it that because of our position here on Earth. The sun isn't moving relative to the Earth, the Earth is moving relative to the sun while spinning on its axis, causing the position of our local star in the sky to change throughout the day and appear to fall against the horizon as night approaches. But come to think of it, you ever wonder why the Earth is even spinning anyway? What's the reason the universe begets sunsets? Now I say sunsets implying many, because we're not the only show in town. There are other sunsets on other worlds and other planets. Could you imagine what they look like? To a species that has only known sunset on one world, could those other sunsets ever compare to the ones here on Earth? To understand the sunset and why the Earth spins, you have to roll back the clock on the solar system to a time roughly 5 billion years in the past. Before there was a sun at the center of it all, before there was neither you or me or anything seen around us today, the solar system was nothing but a vast cloud of dust and gas, which is typically how most things in the universe start off as. Uh, Rick, you're telling me we live in a giant fart? Shut up, Morty. I'm telling the story here. As time progressed, this giant fart cloud collapsed into a disk shape because of its own gravity. This rounded disk, also known as an accretion disk or protoplanetary disk, began to spin because of a sudden imbalance of forces. Accretion disks are a very important concept in astronomy. It is a vital stage in the formation of any solar system. It's sort of like going through solar system infancy or childhood. Through the Hubble Space Telescope, we are able to see many baby pictures of distant solar systems forming around accretion disks of young stars in the cosmos. The sun would form at the center of this disk, igniting to life 5 billion years ago and really setting things into motion. Back then, the early solar system was a mess. Think drunken hungover morning after wild party mess. Things were regularly bumping and colliding into each other while desperately trying to find where the hell their phone went. Things like little planetoids and miniature asteroids were consistently coalescing out of the cloudy haze and crashing into other little planetoids. All the chemicals and stuff that would later make you and me up were a part of that chaotic and disorganized blend of spinning stuff and matter. Some of that stuff would clump together to form the first planets while still maintaining the momentum of the collisions that marked the beginning era of our solar system. Eventually, after millions of years of evolution, the planets and the asteroid belt would shape and form on their orbits further out from the sun, but still bear a legacy of that time of chaos. The descendants of that ancient protoplanetary disk would inherit their rotation, their spinning motion from the overall spinning motion accumulated since the earliest age of the solar system. The energy of every impact, every collision of particulate matter would be conserved 5 billion years later as the solar system became more compressed and compacted. This is related to the law of inertia where objects in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by some unbalanced force. This object inertia would eventually give way to spinning planets and the orbits of moons. This is also known as the conservation of angular momentum in fancy pants science terms. It is the rotational analog of Newton's first law 
mentioned earlier. Remember that rap? Yeah. It is a physical concept that can be related to everything from whirling ice skaters, Italian pizza, all the way to solar systems and spinning black holes at the center of massive galaxies. Let's take an example. Like when an ice skater has his or her arms outstretched, he or she is slower, but if you tuck your arms in, you spin faster. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Conservation of angular momentum. That was the conservation of angular momentum in action, everyone. <laughs> and also fit harmony. Same concept. At the beginning of our solar system, there was a big fuzzy cloud with lots of chaos, not much spinning. But if you compact that messy cloud via an accretion disk, you get faster spinning planets and eventually sunsets that you can admire with your special someone. Now if only I had a special someone to watch that sunset with, ha, one could only dream, eh? Eventually, over time, our solar system cleaned up and compacted itself into the rounded disk shape more familiar to the pictures found in your school textbooks today. There's still much to learn from watching the universe that way, whether it's a new perspective on something as timeless as sunsets or something deeply resonating like the formation of our solar system and the genesis of spinning planets. A new dawn awaits us with every question we ask into the cosmos. A still more glorious dawn awaits, not a sunrise, but a galaxy rise. What what? If you enjoy this kind of content or just like hearing the sound of my voice, please support Science Epic on Patreon and I will be infinitely grateful. If you want to see more videos from Thoughts on the Cosmos, click here. This has been Thoughts on the Cosmos, Episode 9, Destiny at Sunset. My name is Son of Terra 92 and I will see you next time. Boop.